225. Jewel 225. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. The great locusts and the locust swarm. The other locusts and the, my great army which I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. 28. And afterwards, after the revival, after the restoration, the spiritual renewal then look at the declarations of the almighty God he said I will pour who is the I? he who came out without the raw material and he said let there be light and there was light the uncreated creator he said I will pour my spirit on all flesh your sons and daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dreams your young men will see visions i want to believe god that there has been mighty spiritual renewal the lord is on the process of taking us back to where we first met him but he said after this i will pour when you look at the active world pour it presupposes a deluge, a heavy rain. Because we are believing God this evening that there shall be heavy rain in this place. He said, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. Another translation says, all mankind. Another translation says, all people. It means provision to receive the Holy Spirit is for all. But to receive it is my choice. It is very important we begin to see how the wind of revival is blowing. Revival cannot be the property of a single denomination. When revival enters a nation, it sweeps across a nation. From the north to the south and from the east to the west. He said, I will pour my spirit on all flesh, all mankind. Help me ask your neighbor, are you a human being? If you're a human being, then you're a candidate. Every human being today is a candidate for what the Lord is going to do. Because there's going to be a spiritual ornament which the Lord will release upon everybody. Because we cannot afford to live here empty-handed. We cannot afford to go here the same way that we came. Power will come upon somebody. And the presence of God will come upon somebody today. He said, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. And for anybody to be a member of assemblies of God without the Holy Ghost baptism. It means you are an observer in our denomination. It doesn't matter how much you pay as tithes. In fact, nobody is qualified to preside over tongue speakers if you don't speak in tongue yourself. If you don't receive the Holy Spirit and you have not received you don't qualify to be a dick. You don't qualify to be a dick. And of course, if you're a pastor and you no longer speak in tongue, you should proceed on a, a leaf on the mountain. So that you come down from the mountain talking in tongues. Come down from the mountain with the power of God upon your life. Because after this place, God is raising a generation. A generation that is endowed. A generation that will tell the power of God. He said, I will pour my spirit on all flesh, all mankind. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. When this endowment comes, before that marriage is confirmed to be the will of God. Time has gone when, if God, when 
why God didn't come to church. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor you can prophesy. Say it again, say it again, say it again. Say it again, say it again to your neighbor. You can prophesy. I say you can prophesy. And you can prophesy.
But suddenly, the Bible said, a voice, a voice, a voice spoke from the wilderness. A voice, a voice. You know what? According to Matthew chapter 3, from what from? People abandoned the cathedral in Jerusalem. They abandoned the mighty building. They went to the wilderness. Because the need of the hour was for the voice. We have people, but God is looking for voice. It is voice. A voice that has been endowed. A voice that the hand of God will be upon. A voice, a voice, a voice, a voice. God did not call anybody to be a duplicating machine. If you are busy imitating somebody, the best you can be is number two. And number one cannot be alive. And they begin to look for number two. The Lord is looking for voice. Lift up your hand this afternoon and say, Make me a voice, oh God. Say it again, say it again, say it again. When you become a voice, no matter where you are, man, because if you are a man that is endowed, you don't need to advertise yourself. If you are endowed, even if you are in the bush, even if you are in the wilderness, men abandon the city. They start looking for John the Baptist. Right in the fight, right in the wilderness, because that was a voice. You better locate that original that God has made you. You may waste your years of ministry trying to preach like a rabbi. What's your year trying to preach like baby him? You may watch your whole world trying to preach like a mother. Listen to me. There is an original that God has made it. Man shall look for you. Not because you are imitating somebody. They look for you because of that original that God has made you. Said, a voice spoke from the widow. Then when he spoke in chapter 3, verse 11, he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But somebody is coming after me. His sandals I am not worthy to untie. For he himself, not the preacher, not the pastor, not the reverend, he himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and power. I want to announce that the baptizer is here this evening. The baptizer is here today. He is a king of kings and a lord of laws. Look at John the Baptist. John said, I baptize you, but somebody is coming after me. Now, by age, John and Jesus, who was senior? John and Jesus, who were the senior minister? Amen. From the human... Okay, let me ask a question. The baptizer and the baptized, humanly speaking, who should be the senior minister? Who was the baptizer? Therefore, But look at what I'm saying. Can you imagine him introducing a junior minister and he is saying he is mightier than I. John was saying, I better follow the program of the Holy Spirit. And he said he's, he, he himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and what? Fire. Now, John must have said this. Remember 
what Jesus himself said in Luke 24 49. Time. There are oceans to be navigated, there are mountains to be scared. Don't move until you receive this endowment. Until you be endued with what? Power. From what? On high. Stay here. And when the master said that, in Acts chapter 1 from verse 4, the Bible said, when they were assembled together, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. It is a promise of the Father, and the Father gives his promise to his children. It is very important, and we don't mind emphasizing that, that somebody must be born again. The problem of the church is churchianity without Christianity. People have gone to the church, they know the pastor, they know the leader, but they don't know the Lord of the church. For you to be a candidate for this endowment, for you, you must be born again. He said, for the promise, the promise of the Father to which people, children, are you a child? Have you been born again? Any experience? You know, somebody may have followed his father to the church without being born again. Somebody followed an uncle because he said, if you don't follow me, I won't train you again. And you just join the church. You, just, you don't just join. You, are, you, you get born into the church. Into the church. The church is not a social club. It is a community of pilgrims. People with a common goal. People who want to make heaven. People who, have, who want to make heaven and who want to go to heaven. He says, for this promise, this is the promise of the Father and the children. I want that we are there. The Bible said, they asked him a question. Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? What were they really saying? When the master was with them, he gave them a political promise. He said, when I will come to reign in my kingdom, each of you will be in charge of each tribe of Israel. So that we are thinking of this position. But they said to the master, when they looked at the master, the language of the master had changed. They said, sir, this one you're talking like this. Is it not man that will restore the kingdom to Israel? In their mind, they must have distributed the position. Peter was thinking of the mother-in-law that will be the steward of the government house. John started thinking of an uncle that will be the minister of finance. All of a sudden, the language of the master changed. And he said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons. In everything there is what we call due season. And when the due season comes, it will come to pass. He said, but let me tell you a more important thing. You shall receive what? This is not an afternoon of economizing power. He said, you shall receive what? Now, after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, after, only after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and then you shall be my witness. It didn't start today. Up to today, there is a great divide in the church. Some want the power, some want the position. Help me ask your neighbor, which one do you want, power or position? And when we are talking about spiritual endowment, we are talking about power from on high. We are talking about the clothing of power that shall come upon somebody. Time has come when we should distinguish ministry from position. You better distinguish ministry from position. Deacon, if you are a deacon, it is a position, not ministry. A sessional leader, it is position, not ministry. A presbyter, it is position and not ministry. A superintendent, it is position and not ministry. And the danger is this. If you abandon your ministry for position, any day the position gets out, you become very dry and you no longer be marketable. Listen, he says, we are talking about ministry. Where is your ministry? When the Lord called you, where is that endowment that he released 
upon you. It is that ministry that will make you marketable, not your position. It is that ministry that will take you to places where God says you are going to go. He said, you shall receive what? You shall receive what? After the Holy Spirit is come upon you, then you shall be my witness. If you begin to look at the situation today, the ordinary man on the highway asking what he knows about the Holy Ghost, he will think of a Messiah that the Lord has arranged for him to release upon his enemy. Some years ago, Nigerian police looked at the church and they borrowed a leaf from the church, changed all their vehicles, fire to fire. Until the IG had integrity problem, they decided to protect with integrity. Go to their vehicles today, it is no more fire to fire, it is protecting with integrity. Speak in other tongues. 
not as any other thing, but as a spirit gave them. When the power came, they spoke in tongues. Why do we need this power? First Corinthians 2, 4 and 5 say, When I came to you, my preaching was not with enticing words of wisdom. My preaching was a demonstration of power and of the Spirit. That your faith be not based on the wisdom of men, but the power of God. The preaching of the Word of God is not philosophy and sociology. It is a demonstration of power and of the Spirit. I remember what Isaiah said. He said, I at the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders. It is not enough to criticize imitation powers. Let us produce the original. God wants us to produce the original. Yes, yes, we need to produce the original. People are running away because of chaff. You know. When you, are a, when you are a baby, you run after science and wonders. But when you become an adult, science and wonders will follow you. <laughs> when you follow science and wonders, it will dash you to fake powers, fake anointing. But a man that is endowed, a man, oh my God. Oh my God. our problem is this. Empty hands are laid on empty heads. The Lord will change us. How can we go to the local church level and they say, let the dickens come and pray for this brother. And the dickens will come with empty, dry hands. Be laid on a waiting candidate for miracle. How can I be a pastor minister? And they're asking me to lay hands. Listen, people expect that when you lay hands, something will happen. Because you are a man that is in power. No wonder. Somebody told people in judging. God is with you. He said, forget, wait. If God is with us, what about the ancient miracles? That we had about the founding fathers had no much academics, but they were endowed man. They prayed and the sick was healed. My prayer is this that a God will plant the spiritual borehole in this place. Even as we go home to our churches, that the Lord will plant the spiritual borehole in our churches. That the borehole shall flow. Rivers of deliverance, rivers of healing, rivers of salvation. It shall come to pass. Men shall come from the east, they shall come from the west, they shall come from the south. They will jump into the river, they will find solution to their cases. The world is tired of film. When film pulled weight in crusade has expired. Even Jesus on our seabo may not, you know, the, the, the one that you see the white man called Jesus speaking Igbo may not really appeal to the intelligent man. Time when drama pulled away has expired. When you are dramatizing, somebody who read theater art will begin to correct your technical mistakes. Listen. Time has also passed. When it is banned, banned, banned. You will agree with me that every music now in the world is in the church. Now we have Christian disco, Christian uh, Awindo, Christian Caliph. And my worry is this. 
Sometimes our musicians imitate the worldly musicians in the midnight and sing it to the church in the morning. That's why this, this endowment is very important. It's very, very important. Because it's very, very important. You don't use technology to first technology. They will say we know the secrets. But when it becomes supernatural versus technology, they will go to the lab. They can discover the secrets. And they will come to you and say, What is the secret? You say Jesus is a secret.
He wants to take you to higher heights. He wants to take you to higher heights. And when the Spirit of God comes, you may never discover what prayer is all about. When they talk about four hours prayer non-stop, senior intercession, you may not understand if you don't pray in tongues. You may never, never discover your language is not a lot, but God has given us a prayer language. The Bible said, he who speaks in tongues speaks mysteries to the Almighty God. Mysteries. You can be lost in prayer when you are praying in tongues. We don't have all the time to be able to talk about that mystery, but listen. The Lord wants you to be baptized if you have not been baptized. Then if you receive the Holy Ghost in 19 Abraham, spoke in tongues the last 19 Moses, you need a second touch. There's no way you can go here empty. There's no way you can go here the same way that you can. The hand of God will come upon you afresh. And you will speak in another tongue as the Spirit gives you the Then, when the Lord was speaking, He said, This sign shall follow those who believe. Not just the pastors. He said, it shall follow those who believe. And if you believe, lift up your hand and say, Lord, I believe. He said, it shall follow you. He said, in my name, you shall cast out demons. You will speak with new tongues. Speaking in tongues is not the property of assemblies of God. It is for Bible believers. If the Catholics are today receiving the Holy Ghost, Protestants are receiving the Holy Spirit and talking and talking. And how can Assemblies of God members stay with observer status? God, I won't go from Obutu until I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it is because that hunger departed. Where people will lie and say, I won't leave the church until God does something in my life. And the Lord is not going to send the new Holy Ghost. Over 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit came and has been here with us. And that is why, if you study the Bible, they were not asking, has the Lord given you? He said, have you received? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Now, if you are a fresh candidate, you've never received the Holy Spirit, are you a child of God? Then the Holy Spirit is your birthright. It is your birthright. It is your birthright. Your birthright. You don't need to struggle so much for Holy Spirit baptism. It is your birthright. If you are open. And then if you receive before. And you see that the only way. The power of God is present. That you might. Receive another touch. And speak in tongues. And then. You will ask God. Father. I have received the Holy Spirit. I speak in tongues. But no other manifestation. No other manifestation. Lord, I'm looking for that manifestation. I'm looking for that manifestation. I said the Lord is looking for availability. He wants to release His power upon you. He wants to endow you. There are things you're going to do for Him. You can't afford to go empty. You can't afford to move out without this endowment. You cannot afford to be empty. The sick must be healed. The dead will be raised. Blind eyes shall be opened. The crippled shall walk. The days of miracles are not over. God is prepared. He's still willing. He's still doing it. He wants to use you. I can hear him say, I want to use you. I want to use you. It is time. It is time. It is time for hidden prophets to manifest. It is time. It is time. It is time. You have been in a bottle for a long time. It's been caught. The hand of God is going to come upon the bottle. And there shall be explosion upon that bottle. You are going to come out and be what God wants you to be. If you don't believe in the Holy Spirit baptism, God will not surprise you with God. The Lord is not the one way of There was a place where so Holy Spirit baptism was going on. And every brother received. 
And every sister had one brother in our suit. And he was asked, Why have you not received your husband? He said, I don't want to receive the one house and you treat me like that. That was his problem. But he was giving some advice. He was blessed. He received the Holy Spirit and started doing the same thing. Another person, a sister, people were receiving the Holy Ghost, some were falling on the ground. But she received the Holy Spirit without falling on the ground. And she came and said, I've not received the Holy Ghost. Why? She said, because I've not fallen on the ground like other people. Listen, God is not a one-way traffic. God is not a one-way traffic. The power of God can come upon you and you fall on the ground. The power of God can also come upon you and you will not fall on the ground. God is not a one-way traffic. Open up yourself to the Holy Spirit, what He wants to do in your life. It is His will. Let me say it again. His perfect will is that you won't live here without the Holy Spirit baptism. That is the will of God. The will of God is that you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That is the perfect will of God. Refuse to hear anything that will cause you to get out of the perfect will of God for you. He wants you to be you. He wants you to receive power. 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 Yes, that is what he said. He wants you to receive power. He wants you to receive power. You can receive the Holy Spirit when nobody has dead hands on you. You can also receive the Holy Spirit when hands are laid on you. Sometimes in the Bible, they lay hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. But I know, I, I'm talking about laying the neck. I don't mean pricking the forehead and breaking the neck. I mean, you know, the problem is when empty hands are laid on empty heads, they apply carbohydrate strength. But when the power of God comes upon a man, when you lay hands under the Holy Spirit, something will happen. You will receive the Holy Spirit. I want you to be open. Be open, be open. Be open, be open. I want you to be open. Right where you are. The Holy Spirit is already policing this ground. 100 meters radius. Holy Spirit is policing this ground. The entire camp, the presence of God is there. You don't even need to come out to receive the Holy Spirit. And when the power of God begins to move, miracles will naturally take place. Healings will naturally take place. When the power of God begins to come, God, oh my God, He will. He will fill my heart today. Oh, 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 oh.